Hello, thanks for joining me, Nancy North Star Ministry. Okay, so I'm back, and um, we're going to uh, begin today in the book of uh, Psalms. I'm going to start from Psalms 34, and I'll probably read a few Psalms, maybe up to Psalm 37. We'll see how it goes, but um, okay. A Psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lighted and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. And can the Lord definitely do that today? Yes, he he certainly can. <laughs> I am a living proof. <laughs> the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. And um, remember uh, Psalm 23, um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, there's no want. Um to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he, be, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Guile is deceit, okay, like lies. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and that are of a, a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. You know, oftentimes uh, when people hear the, about the fear of the Lord, they think, oh, well, what kind of a God is that that you have to fear him? You know, and they don't understand they think that it's um, it, because it triggers something in them, you know, that ego <laughs> prevents them from ever, you know, hearing that they have to surrender, right? Um, it's it's kind of a bothersome thing for people that are living in a low vibrational um, egoic, uh, you know, where the ego has control over their, their emotions, and their attitudes, they are, their abject uh, repulsion of the things of God, you know, complete di uh complete polar opposites okay <laughs> but um and you know when they hear uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous you know because when you sign up when you take up your cross and you follow the lord you know it is not uh, an easy journey you are signing up for uh, for all the lessons you're going to be learning for the um, ascension for eternal life and it is a lot of lessons it's a lot of learning a lot of growth it's transformation it's transformation right and left you know <laughs> And so you don't you don't stay uh, in in your old ways. You you, you know you you are growing through the knowledge uh, and, and faith of the truth. You know, and so um, they they see that many of the afflictions of the righteous. You know, when when many um, many on the left would would rather be you know out there being materialistic and just living for the day and the the fun times and not not ever applying themselves to um, to the security of their souls, you know, they don't even consider that. They figure, well, you know, uh, I'll I'll worry about that later, <laughs> you know. But tomorrow is promised to no man. You know how many people, you know, have dropped dead overnight and, and uh, all of a sudden had a heart attack the next day and they weren't around. You just can't take life for granted that way. Um, you always, you know, it's best to consider your soul. But, you know, I read these because um, these are, um, these kind of are telling, these psalms are, are uh, telling of a lot of um, 
how it is in our journey, our walk. Uh, we go through a lot of afflictions and a lot of, and we sign up for it, you know, because we know that through every challenge, through every um, trial, uh, every tribulation, it's all for the purpose of strength, strengthening us in the inner man and gaining the wisdom and gaining the lesson and growing in understanding and in patience and endurance and all of these things that God bestows upon his people, you know, and it's for the purpose of, uh, you know, ascending and, and following the Lord, you know, <laughs> and being joyous, you know, because that is where the happiness, you got to go through the pain. This earth is all about pain, as I've said before. It's all about pain and lessons. This is like the hell we we come into, you know, this matrix. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of pain and a lot of grief and a lot of chaos and drama. But, you know, you've got to go through that. you got to press forward, gain the wisdom, consider through a lot of reflection, through a lot of silence and meditation and spending time alone and seeking, you know, it's a, it's a, a journey where you're seeking and you're going within and you're learning to put all things under your feet and to overcome and to, uh, to evolve. And so it's an exciting journey, but it is certainly not for the weak at heart. <laughs> you know? Of course, you don't know that going into it, you know, <laughs> you learn these things as you move along. Uh, but God never gives you more than you can handle. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Um, even the number of hairs, ha hairs on our head are counted, you know. Um, and he knows our needs even before we ask. And so, I don't know about you, but I find that to be an absolute comfort, especially in a time like today where there's so much uncertainty in the world. There are certain things that are certain. You know, wh whether the, the world goes upside down, haywire, filled with chaos and drama, confusion, mass deception, all that that's out there in this dark world that we live in. Yet, there are certain absolutes that never change. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, and his word is the truth that prevails. And uh, there are certain things that just never change, and they are there. And that when you build your house upon that rock, you can withstand any storm that befalls you, <laughs> because you're never alone. So that's the beauty of it. Okay, Psalm 35, a Psalm of David. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear, and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chaff before the wind, and let the, ang uh, the angel of the Lord chase them. And boy, I can tell you, he really does. <laughs> He really does. We have a situation um, and it gets out of hand and pretty soon there's all these people that come up against you, against one person, right? And you haven't done anything to these people, but they're after you. They want your energy. They want your spiritual gifts and they're doing everything they can to siphon and harvest and, you know, just corner you and, and just sort of sabotage your life in certain ways. You know, when you give it all to God, because the Lord teaches us to lay our burdens at the feet of Jesus. And uh, the battle is the Lord's. You know, these people don't fight against you. They're, they're taking on Almighty God and His power. This is what many people don't understand. And God will sit their ass down every time. It is a fearful thing to watch. But it is really amazing to see how God steps in and defends his people. It is an amazing thing to watch. So um, I just want to let you know, I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the fact <laughs> that the Lord goes before me in battle and uh, handles it all. Okay. Uh, let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit which without cause they have digged for my soul. It is so true. These people 
dug so many pits for me to fall in, so many entrapments and snarements, so much catfishing, and, uh, you know, just uh, amazing. With these people trying to, to do, try to poke the bear all the time, you know, because they're always trying to get a, um, you know, reaction. <laughs> So they can sit by and, and siphon your energy, you know, for themselves. Oh, boy. This is the world we live in today. But uh, that's how it is. Let destruction come upon him at unawares. And let his net that he held, that he hath hid him. I'm sorry. And let his net that he hath hid catch himself into that very destruction. Let him fall. I wish more people read from God's word. They would think twice about maybe taking stupid, foolish, haphazard, and reckless actions against innocent people. You know, sometimes people, especially in our day, that uh, many people run around uh, with big heads and arrogance and pride, thinking that they know more than God. And, you know, they don't realize that God's listening and watching everything. The veil is very thin right now with this shift that has gone on. I mean, you have the the cloud of witnesses that see up close and personal every action taken by these evil, corrupt people. And uh, he's dealing with it, you know, and we're seeing it. We're seeing it. <laughs> it's reported on the news every day. Okay. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, which deliverest the poor from him that is too strong for him? Yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. You know, when we're falsely accused and um, there's coming a time, you know, because we've got to go through this pain. Um, God's shaking things up, as I said before. And, um, but, you know, the devil doesn't go down without a fight and he's filled with wrath. And, you know, they're, they're power hungry. You know, they're drunk with power. These people don't ever want to go away. <laughs> you know? But it's time. It is time. Uh, that reign of tyranny and terror, but you know, they give it a last ditch effort. So there are going to be many people maybe possibly persecuted and falsely arrested and false accusations and things like that, you know, will be made against innocent people. So just beware, but you know, wear it as a badge of honor if and when those things happen and take place, because remember Peter in his chains and remember the apostle Paul, none of the disciples got away without being persecuted at one point or another. And, but we have no fear because we know that all power is ordained of Almighty God. And he's coming for his bride. There's a purification process and a cleansing and a washing and a balancing of all things on this planet. It's time for the new Jerusalem that is the above, which is the mother of us all that is free. So it's important for people that are voting in this election to really remember. I just want to bring this up for a quick minute. Don't pay attention to just words. You know, I knew people that were very, very um, karmic in that they um, they would only pay attention to a person's outward appearance. How many times have you heard that? Don't judge a, bu a book by its cover. The outward appearance or how a person, you know, looks or their hair. They don't like their hair. I remember my dear mother-in-law, I loved her dearly and I miss her so much. May she rest in peace. She was a beautiful, beautiful woman. Uh, but I, I know <laughs> I would take her to church with me sometimes. And um, she was very, very interested. Rather than listening to the message, she was always interested in what people were wearing or how fat they were or how obese they were or how loud they were. Or there was always something. <laughs> there was a bit of ethnocentricity there because they were from Eastern Europe. So they, everybody was slim and slender and thin. You know, they didn't have any fat people because everybody walked everywhere because under communist uh, control, you know, every, they built those tall projects in the center Everybody walked everywhere they had to go or rode the bike. So there wasn't any opportunity to be heavy or fat or anything. But um, but no, was, I'm just saying that today, many people, they look, they, they are trained and conditioned to only listen to words that come out of people's mouths. And you can't do that. 
God tells us to test the spirits, whether they be of Christ. You'll know them by their fruits. And people that stand up there, when I heard in, in the, uh, the Camilla, um, one of the um, events that they had for her, somebody out there was uh, saying, Jesus is Lord. She directed that person loud and clear, you're in the wrong place. Okay, if somebody denies the proclamation of Christ in any way. You don't treat a person who's, who's um, you know, on fire for the Lord. You don't treat a person like that. Number one, you don't um, deny Christ before men. Okay. Um, but on the other hand, they did the same thing in the Trump uh, event. And the person that was speaking, I don't remember who it was, but um, he, he agreed. He said, yes, Christ is king. Something to that effect. But, you know, and there was a lot of applause because uh, truly there's one side that does not believe in a higher power. And they are for a one, a one party state. They want to do away with the Constitution altogether. Okay. They believe that they are God. These are Luciferians. They don't come out and say it, but that is what they are. A uh, big Luciferian movement and... Um, they worship their father, the devil, and people need to know that. That is why they've deliberately um, made things the way they are. The inflation is high it is, as it is and uh, dragging everything down, you know, because they're ready to step in and take over. It's all about domination over the masses, a global takeover. So they want to uh, a, a new world order, you know. But um, on the other hand, you see Trump, who is a businessman, and Elon Musk, who stepped up, you know, he answered the call. He felt he had to. He's a businessman. He builds rockets and cars. I mean, these people went up there. And I've heard Trump say before, you know, because they asked him in an interview years ago, would you ever run for office? And he, his answer was no. He would, wouldn't want to. He would hope not to have to. But if nobody else would step up, thing thing to know about successful businessmen is they know how to get things done. They know how to clean up a mess. They're experienced and they, they surround themselves with brilliant minds and brilliant people who are also like-minded and know how to get things done. And they get to work doing it. You have to understand, you've got to know them by their fruits. Now, Trump, that first election, thank God, he became the president at that time because the other side was already celebrating. They were already breaking open champagne pain bottles because they had rigged the election and they figured it was going to, they were going to finish the job they started, which was to incrementally dissolve the Constitution. They wanted to do that. They had an agenda. It's called Agenda 21. That's what they had back then. And so they were eager. You know, Obama did part of it, and then Hillary Clinton was supposed to finish it off. And they had all those FEMA camps, all the internment camps set up already that, uh, you know, that they set up when they took over, the, when they emptied out half the military bases and they retrofitted all those to become internment camps. They already had a big plan, okay? And there are a lot of journalists behind the scene that were discovering all these things and uh, and reporting on all these bits and pieces of information. But it was out there, all right? So, um, but you've got Trump who surrounds himself. He's got a whole prayer team that confess, Lord. They bow down before and acknowledge a higher power, Almighty God. And they confess Christ as, as Lord, Jesus as Lord and Savior. They do confess Christ before men. So Jesus told us, you'll know, uh, you'll know them by their fruits, but also test the spirits to see whether they be of God. Because even now are there many antichrists, okay? You have to understand that we're going to be held accountable for the way you vote. And if people are um, hook, line, and sinker uh, for the left, because and this is not about Republican or Democrat any longer. This is good versus evil. This is light versus darkness. Trump answered the call, and Elon Musk figured that he didn't have a choice, but it was pressed upon him. He's got a lot of children. He's a family man, 
and already he feels that his life is being threatened. He's being bullied. This is a tactic of the left all the time. You have to understand, they'll get up there and say anything they feel you want to hear because that Saul Alinsky playbook that they go by teaches them that the ends justifies the means. Therefore, they justify lying through their teeth to your face. They justify, uh, you know, committing all the heinous crimes they need to commit and pitting one group against another and creating all the chaos and drama deliberately to inflict pain and concern and worry and inflation on the, on the populace so that everybody is so busy trying to just survive and put bread on the table, to put food on the table for their families and come up with ways of, of making rent that they don't have time to really pay attention to what's going on. These people, people create enough distractions, enough interruptions, enough chaos and drama so that uh, in pitting one group against another and the, the millions of dollars they pour into systems like that to get the country divided so they'll be fighting. So Because they know that divided we fall united we stand christ is not divided uh, christ is one body and it's unconditional love and uh, anybody that loves freedom um, there's only freedom in christ when you when you have enough self-love and enough love for your neighbor and enough self-respect and respect for your neighbor and respect for god and you acknowledge god and you give thanks to god and you have gratitude in your heart for every day that you wake up alive and with your health intact. This is where freedom is, okay? This is where you store up treasures in heaven where the thief cannot break in and steal. So another thing to watch for, besides knowing them by their fruits and besides, um, you know, you can look at their track records or whatever. I was in an outside sales rep for about 25 years in the aerospace industry. And um, I read a lot of Trump's books before he even ran for office when he was just a businessman. Because um, I admired him from uh, just his graciousness. If you've read his books, you've, you've seen, you know, deep down inside, this man is a humble man. <laughs> he loves to help people. He is a cheerful giver. He is always helping others, but he doesn't brag about that. He doesn't make that known. There's a lot of good things he's done for many people. He is not a racist. He loves everyone. And the, But see, they've painted, you know, they've got people that are superficial. And here's the thing. A person today in this very late time that we're in, this very late day, you've got, you've got sheep and you've got goats. You've got those who have spiritual ears to hear, and you have those that have ears to hear, but they hear not. Eyes they have, but they see not. You have those who have discernment and an unction with the Holy Spirit. They, they, they can listen with a ready mind, but they know because they have uh, an intuition. They have discernment, and they can tell right off when someone's lying to their face. They see right through all the lies. I don't care what record a person has, but I can tell you right now that those people on the left and all from the top down, you want to uh, end all these child abductions. You want to get rid of all the, the people that are drinking adrenochrome in those elite parties where they're actually uh, sacrificing children and uh, worshiping the devil and having black masses and seances and uh, Hollywood parties and uh, y'all, it's all coming out in the open. You know, it, it doesn't end in the uh, celebrity in the um, in the music industry or the Hollywood. You know, everybody knows <laughs> what these people have been doing, and how the higher ups give authority to. And these people are low vibrational. These people are not even qualified, but they're good at partying and make and having connections. And so therefore they gloat, they, they're they drunk with all that power. Oh, I know so-and-so, and he's a member of this group and that group, this secret society, whatever. And so it's all a big chummy uh, group of, of people that are all connected in one way or another in the higher echelons of power, in the power structure of our country and all over the world. Now, when they um, 
when they give an okay, you know, because somebody who's low vibrational and, and out, operating out of the, the ego, jealous and envious of a lot of light ones because of our spiritual gifts, our, our energy signatures, our happiness, our joy, our faith in God above, you know, they hate that and it triggers them. So they, and they don't even know you, <laughs> but they're jealous. And because of that, they go to the, to so-and-so and for favors, for sexual favors, they'll get, and the guy will say, okay, yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. And then he authorizes energy weapons to be used on innocent American people to scatter the brains, to wipe their memories, to mess with their crown chakras, to mess with their energy fields, to try to get them to have heart attacks, to try to stimulate um, something in the immune system, to try to do... Um, Oh, they do a variety of things, uh, make them go blind. You know, they, they do a lot that the public doesn't even know about. So at this particular time, I'm just saying, there is one side that has a terrible God complex and they do not acknowledge a higher power. All right. Those people are drunk with power and it is the reason why we are in the mess that we are in. And on the other side, you have two men that have answered the call from Almighty God. This is a spiritual appointment. You think either one of those men want to be where they're at? No. Their families are at risk. Their wealth is at risk. You know, these people care about the preservation of the Constitution. Okay? But see, what a lot of people don't know because they've been so blinded and so they've they have fallen for the for the okie doke i'm sorry to say but many of the people have fallen for the okie doke they're going by the records and what so and so said and what this person said oh that person said this and that person said that. there's all this bickering all this fighting but what they're not listening to they're not really tuning in they're not using their intuition you know, we're spiritual beings. <laughs> we see things right through things. They're not, they're not, um, awakened. So don't even bother trying to persuade someone that is not awake. At this late date, this late time in the game, there are those that are awake and there are those that have not awakened and they are still asleep and they're dead set on their, uh, their negativity. They don't like Trump because his hair's funny, because he's a playboy, because he, you know, cheated on his wife. You know, there's a, a, everybody on the planet has issues, okay, that they're working through. That's part of the journey in, on this planet, <laughs> you know. That's part of what you go through for the growth, for gaining the lessons, and for learning, learning about yourself. And as you transform, you leave off a lot of those old ways, those because you grow, because you learn from them and you apply it to yourself. It becomes part of who you are as a person today. All right. Uh, someone who steps up to the plate, who doesn't have to, but feels uh, out of the love for his country and the love for uh, the preservation of freedom in our country, risks it all and takes on that arduous task. And doesn't even take a paycheck and takes all the slander and the hits and the vilification and the assassination of his character and all the man has done is love the Lord and love America, love our country and freedom and what it stands for. I was listening to Elon Musk the other day and he was talking about, they asked him in an interview who he, um, who he feels he's more like, but he, he's very, you know, he said that he, he admires Thomas Jefferson because of his brilliance and, um, his creativity and the things that he stood for and his courage and his, you know, he, he was going on about that. And I agree. I'm going to be also continuing because I have not continued. Um, I haven't finished reading the essential wisdom of the founding fathers, but our, our founding fathers were men of faith, <laughs> men of faith. Uh, they did acknowledge a higher power, and there's no way on earth they would ever have accomplished this vision for uh, us to have a America, a uh, home of the free and brave, uh, without God's intervention, divine providence and intervention in the matters of man. 
uh, nothing happens with the, without the man upstairs approving it and helping it to go forward. We've got, um, you know, it's providence. But anyway, um, so I was, I was just um, commenting on that because today, you know, I was having a conversation with a couple of neighbors and one of them was, I've done all this research and I've listened to all the different news sources out there and I've compared all the, all the voting, the ways that people voted and all the things like that. Yeah, you could do that. Knock yourself out if you want to do that. But I'm telling you, that is not what what you need to look at. You need. I can tell you, I can size a person up within moments of meeting a person and tell you if the person is a fake. There are many people who say whatever they feel you want to hear. That doesn't mean they're qualified. It means they're trying to uh, get through and they'll lie, they'll cheat, they'll steal, they'll kill, they'll maim, they'll do anything for it because the left is all about materialism and uh, preserving the way of life for them. <laughs> Meanwhile, they, these are eugenists who do not value life. They look at us as uh, subhuman, <laughs> you know, and they justify it. They figure, you know, if people are stupid enough and duped enough to fall for it, well, they deserve what they get. That is the attitude of these people on the left, okay? Don't allow them to play you like fools. Now, there's a lot of really ugly ugly stuff that's been done, kept under wraps, done in darkness and secret uh, for, for many decades. These people have, uh, have uh, committed atrocious crimes and um, huge cover-ups have gone on. But uh, when, when the other side um, takes office, there is going to be a need for everyone to hear the truth of what has been going on. There's a lot of lies that have been spun over the years, and the truth is going to have to be completely revealed because God is bringing balance on the planet. And it's time for everything that has been done in darkness to be brought to the fullest extent of light and exposed. So will they have to usher in martial law for that time? Yeah, everybody will be made to watch their TVs to be able to see what has gone on under their noses for all this time, how we were all lied to. We're all going to come to a point where we're going to have to face and see and hear how we have been so snookered and so taken for a ride and so lied to by these people that were entrusted with the public good. And those people will have to stand and answer for their crime. It's judgment day. I mean, I've been talking about that for a while, but I'm just saying there are people that have courage, that have unwavering faith, that have, will stand up to tyranny and call it what it is because they know that God has their back. And this is all part of God's divine providence once again, because he will have a people for himself and he's unraveling. I, I was watching the other night, there was... Um, or it was something I caught on, on one of the YouTubes, how the people that uh, were the wealthiest on the planet at one time, how all their wealth is dwindling, it's all going away. Because see, it was a gross imbalance. God's balancing it all out now. So it's a very exciting time that we're living in, I'm telling you. The Rockefellers and uh, something else, but it talked about all the, the mess, you know, all of the money they had, the Vanderbilts and all the money that they had. And how it's dwindled down to, you know, a lot less, uh, not not much at all in in today's terms. And uh, but yeah, God giveth, but God taketh away. And all those uh, historic events of the Old Testament, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon, and uh, you know, taking all that power away from him, and and then he became a homeless man, right? And his nails grew so long that they were like claws, <laughs> you know, literal claws, because he just because he, he had all his power stripped away from him until he could acknowledge that the Most High God reigns over man. See, because he was taking credit and all the glory. Look what I created. Look what I've done. Look at how I have done this or that. Look how great I am. You know, and a man is full of himself. God, you know, pride comes before a fall every time. <laughs> 
the best way is to uh, walk humbly and honestly before the Lord all of the days of your life, and then you will be on good, solid ground. Okay, I don't know where I stopped. <laughs> so sorry, I got off on a tangent there. But, um, yeah, let's see. Oh, false witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting and my prayer returned into my own bosom. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. But in mine adversity, they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me and ceased not. With hypocritical mockers, in feasts, they gnashed upon me with their teeth. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling from the lions. I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. For they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. And I can attest to that perfectly. <laughs> it's been the story of my life. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, our eye hath seen it. This thou hast seen, O Lord. Keep not silence, O Lord. Be not far from me. Stir up thyself and awake to my judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord my God, according to thy righteousness, and let not them, and let them not say in their hearts, Ah, so would we have it. Let them not say, We have swallowed him up. And that's exactly what they've said about me. <laughs> let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at mine hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Psalm 36, to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. He, for he flattereth himself in his own eyes, until his iniquity be found to be hateful. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep. O Lord, thou preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. O continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. Psalm 37, a psalm of David. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also, also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. 
Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in the way in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Did you hear that? But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt dil diligently consider his place, and he shall, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. That's our abundance. Peace. Okay. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. You know, and this is so true. This is what they do. Those on the left, they're always cutting down the people that speak upright, that speak the truth, that expose things. You know, but they, um, they're they quick to, you know, because they control the media, you know, so that's what happens there. Let me read that again. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the, fat as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell for evermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous uh, speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. <laughs> this is just happening today all of it <laughs> so, I can just tell you the wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him <laughs> the Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land when the wicked are cut off thou shalt see it I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree yet he passed away and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. <laughs> Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them, because they trust in him. Psalm 38 
O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. For thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger, neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. For mine iniquities are gone over mine head, as an heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. My wounds stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. I am troubled, I am bowed down greatly, I go mourning all the day long. For my loins are filled with a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and sore broken. I have roared by reason of the disquietness of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before thee, and my groaning is not hid from thee. My heart panteth, my strength faileth me. For the light of mine eyes, it also is gone from me. My lovers and my friends stand aloof from my sore, and my kinsmen stand afar off. And this is um, also sounding like Job and, and what he went through when he was stricken, you know, from the from the, the top of his head to the um, to the base of his feet, you know, with those boils. But this is about David. <clears throat> but I, as a deaf man, heard not, and I was as a dumb man that openeth not his mouth. Thus I was as a man that heareth not, and in whose mouth are no reproofs. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Thou wilt hear, O Lord my God, for I said, Hear me, lest otherwise they should rejoice over me. When my foot slippeth, they magnify themselves against me. For I am ready to halt, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare mine iniquity, I will be sorry for my sin. But mine enemies are lively, and they are strong, and they that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. They also that render evil for good are mine adversaries, because I follow the thing that good is. Forsake me not, O Lord, O my God. Be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Psalm 39. To the chief musician, even to Je uh, Jedathan, a psalm of David. I said, I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with the bridle, while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace, even with goodness, with good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me, while I was musing, the fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue, Lord, make me to know mine end, and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as an hand breath, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Selah. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches, and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. I was dumb. I opened not my mouth, because thou didst it. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of mine hand, of thine hand. When thou with rebukes dost correct man for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity, Salah. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner, as all my fathers were. O oh, spare me, that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Psalm 40 To the chief musician, a psalm of David. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us word, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. 
If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened, burnt offering, and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the, gr the great congregation. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy mercy continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. Mine iniquities have taken hold upon me, so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of mine head, therefore my heart faileth me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me up, I mean to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. Let them be desolate for a reward of their shame that say unto me, Aha, aha. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, The Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O oh my God. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I don't have my glasses, so <laughs> it's getting a little blurry there. But um, okay, and I will be back uh, next time with uh, maybe Psalm 41. But I'm going to also continue in the book of Matthew, so join me for that. Okay, be back in a few minutes. Bye.